to get started with Databricks Community Edition, you'll have to visit this particular URL. You can find this URL within the PDF named Getting Started with Databricks Community Edition on Canvas. When you visit this URL, you'll have to fill in this form. Uh, so just fill in with your data. I'll use some dummy information here and then go to continue and this is the important part instead of selecting one of the cloud providers because those are paid options and selecting one of those will start a free trial instead click this get started with community edition this link when you click this link you'll get an email where uh, you'll have to verify your email account and when you click on that verification link, you'll be able to log in. I have already done that. So let me go back to my browser. Now something to note, very important, when you are trying to log in, you have to visit community.cloud.databricks.com slash login. You can also search on Google uh, Databricks Community Edition login. Uh, that's important because if you type in accounts.cloud.databricks.com instead of community, you will be uh, given a page for the paid version of Databricks. We don't want that to happen, so make sure you have community at the beginning of this URL. So log in. And after logging in, you'll see a similar page. It shows you a notebook and a very useful quick start tutorial. I highly recommend clicking on this start tutorial link. So let's get started. Right beside the name, you can see that I have a choice of different programming languages. By default, it is SQL. We are able to select a different programming language, but right now SQL is okay. The nice thing about this notebook, this is somewhat similar to Jupyter Notebook, is we are able to have these comments and heading as well as uh, this code section. And we can run all or run individual section by clicking here. And we are also able to select the programming language we want within that section. Now, before we move forward to run this notebook, to run this code, we need a computing engine. We talked about this in the lecture about uh, Spark, that we need a Spark engine. Basically, you need a computer to run this code. And that's where this connect option comes in. If you click connect, say I need a resource, a compute resource to connect, and which is called a cluster. Now, you need to create a cluster. If you, already, if you don't already have one, so right now, of course, I don't have any cluster. So I'll go ahead and create one. So the default name is OK. And the runtime, you have to select a specific version. I would recommend just keep it the default one and click Create, Attach, and Run. What it will do is it will create a cluster, which is creating a computer for you, and then attach that computer with this particular piece of code. And only when that is done, we will be able to run the code that's available within this file. And this can take some time, depending on the available resources. And because we are using the free edition, it may take a few minutes. So we'll have to wait. We can review what's happening. For example, in the first command, so command four, uh, previously we don't have any commands there. What we are doing is we are creating a table named diamonds, and we're using CSV format and the path where we are getting the data from is coming from this location. Now, this is very convenient for us because Databricks comes with some built-in data sets. These are already stored within the Databricks cloud and we can use these data sets for our example or practice. We are also able to import our own data, which is something that's uh, available on Canvas. You can see the videos for that, but for now, we can use the CSV file, uh, diamonds.csv, that data, and we can import it for within the table named diamonds. So that's what's happening here. Now we can see our cluster is 
uh, available now this green circle so we would be able to run this so let's go ahead and run this cell Now it can take some time as I said this is a free version so it can sometimes take a while and once the running is done of course you are not going to see anything because it's only creating a table for us. Uh, then if I want to visualize that table we would be able to do that using this select command and we are selecting everything from diamonds. Then you can have some python code and this is a good way to see the power that we have. We have SQL for this then SQL for this and then we are able to write Python code and to write Python you simply start with Python and then you can select Python by going from this uh, drop down menu. Now you can see our Spark job is completed. We get this OK statement that means we are already done with importing the data. Now if I run this second cell we are going to see a table because it's selecting all of this data from the diamonds table and yes indeed we have this table. So please go ahead and complete the rest of the steps. It goes through uh, a few steps and it will also show you how to display the uh, table that we created some visualizations as well. This is a very good way to start. So please complete this and then we can go and learn some more advanced commands for Spark. Thank you.